Hello everyone, welcome back to Raw Online and we shall see today about polyps and tumors of the stomach. What is a polyp? By definition, polyp is defined as a nodule or mass that projects above the level of the surrounding mucosa. And of all the UGI endoscopies, the incidence of detection of gastric polyps is 5%. Classification of gastric polyps goes as non-neoplastic, hamartomatous, neoplastic and the very rare inflammatory fibroid polyp. Non-neoplastic polyps of which inflammatory and hyperplastic polyps are the most common constituting about 90% of all the gastric polyps. Then comes the fundic gland polyps. Hamartomatous polyps are more common in the intestine rather than the stomach. Neoplastic polyps we have adenomas of which tubular adenoma is the most common in the stomach. So gastric polyps can be hyperplastic, fundic gland, adenomatous polyp and the carcinomas of which the gastric neuroendocrine carcinoid tumors can also present as a polyp. Hyperplastic polyp constitutes 50 percent, fundic gland polyp constitutes 7 percent, the adenomatous 3 percent and rarely the adenocarcinomas can also present as a polypoidal uh, growth, it constitutes 2 percent, other types it constitutes 5 percent, whereas the normal mucosa occurs in 30 percent. Now we shall see about inflammatory and hyperplastic polyps. So, as I said, it constitutes 90% of all the gastric polyps. They are due to chronic inflammation of which H. pylori plays a very important role, common in elderly age group of 50 to 60 years. And because of chronic inflammation, it produces chronic gastritis which leads to injury, reactive hyperplasia occurs which leads to protrusion of increased growth of the mucosa and occurring as polyp. And if the polyp is less than 1.5 cm, we need not bother at all. Whereas if it is more than 1.5 cm or 2 cm, it is carrying an increased risk of dysplasia. So they should be resected and sent for biopsy for histopathological examination. Morphologically, inflammatory or the hyperplastic polyp are smaller in size constituting less than 1 cm usually. They can occur as multiple polyps, have a smooth surface and ovoid in shape. Microscopically, they have cystically dilated glands with elongated and hyperplastic foveolar glands. So, inflammatory or the hyperplastic polyps are characterized by foveolar gland hyperplasia. We have edematous lamina propria with inflammation and surface ulceration. This is an endoscopic and gross view of the hyperplastic polyp. It is usually a sessile polyp, just very small size and ovoid and smooth surface. Microscopic images showing foveolar gland hyperplasia, which is very characteristic of hyperplastic polyps. Another picture showing foveolar gland hyperplasia, which sometimes gives the appearance of a corkscrew appearance. And here, hyperplastic polyp with ulceration and inflammatory infiltrate. So, we shall see about next type of polyp, fundic gland polyp. As the name goes, it is more common in the gastric body and the fundus. It is well circumscribed. It can be either single or multiple and it can be either sporadic or associated with familial adenomatosis polyposis coli. With increasing use of proton pump inhibitors, the occurrence of fundic gland polyp is increased because they inhibit the gastric acid production. And on comparison to hyperplastic and inflammatory polyps, here there is absolutely no or very minimal inflammation. And there we saw cystically dilated glands and foveolar gland hyperplasia. Here the cystically gland dilated glands are lined by flat and parietal chief cells and very rarely only foveolar cells. If it is associated with the familial adenomatosis polyposis, 
This fundi gland polyp carries the increased risk of dysplasia and carcinoma. This is a gross and endoscopic view of fundi gland polyp and this it shows a numerous cystically dilated glands which are lined by parietal cells and chief cells. Foveola cells are very rare whereas foveola gland cells hyperplasia are seen in hyperplastic polyp and we cannot see any inflammation or any minimal inflammation which these two points are very characteristic of fundi gland polyp. So, this is a fundi gland polyp with dilated glands of the body which lined by parietal or the chief cells predominantly. If it is associated with the familial adenomatosis polyposis, it can be having increasing risk of dysplasia. So, this is a picture of fundi gland polyp. Here there is absolutely no dysplasia. Here there is mild dysplasia with the glandular architectural abnormalities and stratification of the nuclei. And here we cannot truly say this is indefinite. This is absolutely fine. No dysplasia. Here indefinite. We are not able to dogmatically say that this is having a dysplasia. Here there is low grade dysplasia, fo focally crowding of glands and stratification of the nuclei.